So, before I start, do you guys have any idea of what robotics actually is, or what a robotics competition what actually happens at them? Uh, I don't necessarily. I mean, I, I kind of, you know, I can figure out high level, high level yeah. robotics. But why don't you, why don't you give me a quick uh, review of what it is? Yeah. So I'm basically just gonna. Feedback. I'll just give you a rundown of basically what the team is, what we do at competitions, and then possible ways you can help us by being sponsors. So basically, I have a quick video for you. It'll explain a lot and uh, I'll talk through it. Okay. So what you're going to see is basically the robot competing in different competitions and I'll kind of just explain it as it goes through. So can you guys both see it right now? Yeah, yeah. All right. very good. Cool. So Bert's our team being distributed robotics team. Those are just some uh, shots of the robot in works. So what it has to do during competitions is perform tasks like throw balls through hoops, stuff like that. They don't fight, like, you know, kill a robot you see on TV. <laughs> so here's just us kind of testing it out. That's what we have to do, build the robot to kill a certain task. So, you know, you'll see some shots of us trying to get it to do that. So what we do is, I'll talk about that a little bit more, we have a summer camp for kids coming in so they can uh, learn to build the robot earlier. They can come in and know how to do it and join the team. It has four parts. We have mechanical, builds the outer shell of the robot. I'll talk about these more in detail too. We have software, electrical, and we have the most important the business. So what we do is we have to all work together to make sure the robot actually works for the competition. Well, I'll lower that a little bit. So uh, you'll see the competitions happening on screen right now. Just kind of get a look at the stands. There's probably about a couple thousand people who come to these things over a three day period. So what we'll do is we'll compete against robots from other schools in certain tasks. So last year it was like, you know, get a ball, throw it through a hoop, you get a certain amount of points for that. So think of it as like um, college basketball is coming up. You guys watch that? Yeah. So obviously, everyone does. So um, it's like that, everybody gets seedings, and then you have to uh, just beat the best teams and be the best team there. It's like Hampton High School, Carletti. <laughs> we did all this shit. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, we had mentors too. We were smart. There was mentor. Tell me who your mentor is. Mr. Farnese. No kidding. Yes. All right. Let me just stop at that. All right. So basically, that's that's pretty much what the competitions look like and what they uh, what we do at them. We compete against other teams. Do you guys have any questions about the video before I move on? No, I think mm. that's great. All right, cool. So what we do is. Uh, FRC stands for the, which will be entered in the competition, it stands for the FIRST Robotics Competition. FIRST stands for For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. So it was conceptualized by a man named Dean Kamen, who brought together the idea that uh, students should be able to come together and work on something like robotics, where they can compete against each other. For kids who didn't want to do sports, I, I do sports, but you know, the other kids who aren't as athletically inclined to do things like that, they can, uh, they can do stuff like this, like robotics. So uh, it brings a lot of smart kids together, and they'll get together and build a robot, which is pretty cool. Uh, it'll challenge students to raise funds, build a robot to complete a task, and compete with other robots and work against each other. So yeah, what you saw in the video, they'll, we'll program it to do a task, we'll control it from a remote, and then that's it. Like We can't touch the robot during the competition. It'll just have to compete, and we'll have to steer it during the competition. So here you'll see a number 4750, that's our robot number. It's basically what number we entered the entire robotics organization in. So when we joined, we were the 4750th team. Uh, so that started from zero and then one, it keeps going up. So to give you guys an idea of how robotics is pretty much exponentially growing, uh, it started in 1989, so that's 27 years. And since we joined in 2011, so we were the 4,750th team, and now just in that three time, three year period, there's over 6,500 teams. It's, it's growing pretty quickly, which is apparent when you know society now is going more towards technology. So more and more people are coming to the competitions, which means if you give us a sponsorship, you'd be getting more and more eyes on your actual uh, company, which is good, obviously. So some other more important things, we get awards for the competitions a couple years ago when we joined, we got an award called the Rookie Inspiration Award and the Highest Rookie Seed. So basically, the best way I can explain that is a Cinderella story in a college or any kind of sporting event, where uh, if you're a younger team, a less experienced team, and you do well, which we did, 
you're going to get more viewership because you know people like to see that. They don't like to see the powerhouse school winning every single year. And Florida Gulf Coast. <laughs> exactly. Well, Florida Gulf Coast went farther one year. Alabama last year, I think, won against the 3C. People were interested in that and more interested in Kentucky going 35-0 and 0 and destroying everyone. So that brings more people to watch us because we'll usually provide you know a good story. Uh, what else? We have the divisions. So we, do you guys have any questions on that before I move on to the divisions? Good. So basically we have four different parts that'll help bring the robot together in competitions. Uh, me on business, we go to companies and ask for money so they can get us for sponsorships so we can get the parts to build the robot. The robot all together costs somewhere between $25,000 and $30,000. So it's obviously a lot. Uh, it costs maybe 2,000 per competition that we enter once around three during the year, which what you saw in the video, we're going to compete against other schools with those. Every time we do that, we have to pay a fee to enter in. So we, it's our job to build up that money. The software team is the brain of the robot, the programming, they're the ones, you see, I don't know if you can see that picture, they're you know, writing the program on the computers that the robots have to follow. During the actual competition, there's a period where we can't control the robot and they'll just have to, uh, whatever they program the robot to do, it has to do on its own. So that's kind of cool. They, um, it's not a controlled robot for a little bit, it's just whatever they program it to do, they do. So that's pretty much their job. The electrical team runs with, does all the wires, the battery, the charge of the robot, obviously if it doesn't have a charge, it can't work. It needs you know, electricity to power it. So that's what the electrical team will do. And then the mechanical team will just build the outer shell of the robot. Um, Last year our robot was uh, pretty tall, we saw it in the video. Its uh, directive was to throw balls over a hoop. This year it's a medieval sort of theme. We have to, there, it's like a castle. We have to get a ball, traverse some kind of plane like a rough terrain, we have to get the robot to open a door, and then we have to get the robot to like throw a ball through it. There's a lot of throwing balls through hoops in these things. For some so reason. Are you able to utilize some of the technology that was already created in last year's robot, or it's no. gotta be from scratch, right? It has to be from scratch. We can use outer mechanical, like physical parts, like let's say like, like a wooden design. Beam. Yeah, we can use like a wooden beam again, but we can't use any of the wiring that has to all get scrapped. Mm -hmm. so that sucks. So do you, is the, does that robot live into perpetuity, or does that robot get broken down for parts to use for the new robot? I think we can break it down for parts. You definitely can't reuse like the complete same wiring, right. but you can, you know, take apart the wiring and use it again in a different way. So yeah. Do you keep them like from year to year to show what your progression is and how that robot worked for that year and so You forth. mean like have a list of yeah, have a, We could, but since we're self-funded, it's harder to, you know, we need parts. Mm -hmm. So it's probably more, it makes more sense for us to take the robot apart and keep it on display. Okay. They've kept it for a while. I've seen it sometimes. I saw it at a, something I was at. They were running uh, around the library or something. At the new one. That, yeah, you know, right. That might have been the new one. They built the new one. So the new one's, I think, almost done. Uh, our first competition's this Saturday, so it should be going through its final touches. They and where where okay. do your competitions take you? Where are they local? Where do you try They're to mostly, um, I think, uh, sports again. You'll have, uh, like, we'll enter competitions near us locally. Our first one's in Seneca. Okay. So, you know, that's not that far. Right. So then, when if you win that competition, you just keep moving more and more to play more teams. So okay. we'll move, like, to a national level, to a we get that far global level playing teams from all over the place okay. so that's how we'll kind of we'll play teams from this area first though schools around here so yeah the mechanical team does the outside part of the robot do you guys have uh, any questions about different parts of the team what they do and, and do you find more male or female male in the building part of it in the mechanical section than you do in the, the software if you would I would say most of the males are in the mechanical and most of the females are in software for whatever reason. I don't think it's always like that. It just happens to be this year. You are. They go where I am pretty much. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so what we do, this, this all comes together through the help of sponsors. So, um, I'll, I just want to show you some possible sponsorship opportunities you guys can take up with us. So you're gonna see different levels, can I move this? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna see different levels of sponsorship here, ranging from uh, 2,000 to 50 dollars. Do any of these immediately jump out at you in bold face? Just like uh, maybe estimated amount of money you guys give at a certain time. Each one, obviously you're paying for what you get, mm -hmm. pretty much. Each time you go up, you're gonna get more benefits to it. You're gonna get more publicity to the robot. Oh, we're gonna 
can give you something from us. Yeah, that's for sure. How's the Pueblo State work? Like, what do you mean? What well, basically, okay, let's start with the first one. You get a page in the bird ad book for advertisement. Yeah. So at the competitions, we hand out an ad book to everybody who comes to our pit area. Our pit area is where we keep the robot. I don't know if you have a picture on here I can show you. No, we, um, the pit area is where you keep the robot during the competition when it's not actually competing. So if people come to our pit area, we give them a flyer or a, a little brochure. And so if you took out a sponsorship, you'd have a page in the brochure or however much you paid for. So then when, as you move up, you can get your name like on the back of our t-shirts, all in the actual pit area, all in the robot itself. So, you know, as you move more and more up, you can, people will see the robot, or people will see your sponsorship more often. Got it. All right. So, you know, do any of these jump out of you right away? Um, yeah, we're going to do the, what, what's the $25 one? I, know. <laughs> I need the 20 where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the $25? You get, um, you, you, the $50 we, uh, just start bringing into my beer money. Tootsie Roll, you get Tootsie Roll wrappers. And, I, and I, you know what, I, and it's, it's NCAA bracket week, so I have a $20 a bracket. So I get some creativity on this deal. I don't know, let, let me see what we can do. Yeah. We'll figure, something out. we'll figure something out for you. All right, cool. So the um, basically what I would, I don't know how much you guys like actually have to, you know, donate, but I would say probably, if these are probably a lot, I would say somewhere in this area, probably silver, because the big jump is to get you on the team shirt. So what it does is we're, we're walking around at the competition, you can actually like see the business there instead of just in the pit area. So we'll see them all throughout the competition, not just in our little area. And if that obviously doesn't work, then We'll take any sponsorship. We're extremely grateful for it. So that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, can I have this? Yeah. We'll, yeah. All right. So um, give me 24 hours. Cool. When you yeah. decide, you can just uh, either contact my dad or Mr. Farnesi. Okay. You don't have his number. I can give it to you. Do you have it? I might have Gary. It's not his number. You got it. It's not. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So Very whenever good. you guys decide, just contact one of them, and uh, yeah, we'd be happy. To have you as a sponsor would be great. I'm, I'm doing my lead consultant, which is our, our sales guys, um, sales presentations this week. So you, you know you're, you're better than at least one of the guys that I have. <laughs> you know, which is pretty good because the guy is not a, you know he's a, supposedly a professional, and you're a freaking junior in high school. Are you a junior? Yeah. First year doing this. Yeah. So yeah, he's better than one of our guys already. <laughs> that's um. Well, that's. Good. No I, I mean, I work here. Right? <laughs> I'm happy, but yeah, I'm like, oh my god. Am I really happy? <laughs> Don't worry. Story's going on a pip. Yeah. Thank you, Antonio. Yeah, I really appreciate yeah, your nice job. You got it. Thank you. Mm. You got it. Thanks, Maybe we can come see you Pop my nice suit. Yeah. Nice suit. We'll do. Everything else is good, bud. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I usually don't do these alone, but yeah. I prefer it honestly. If somebody. You know, cramping my style. Yeah, yeah it's a, uh, I love it. So, what, nice. what's, any sports right now or not? Uh, ice hockey's done. Right now, I'm playing tennis actually. Okay. Cool. I need something to do, and my friends were like, you know, you're athletic, just come out and do it. Yeah. So. Good. You good or a hack like him? Oh, I'm terrible. <laughs> no, I'm better than him. Uh, he can. He can at least. Serve. He runs. He used to run around and just. He's like. We used to just run around and just hit the ball back and forth. Ball right. So yeah, yeah I mean, I may make varsity, so that sounds okay great. First year ever playing. Absolutely. Good. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. I love it. Good and time. then roller hockey. Nice. Activity. I'll be back in 24 yeah. hours. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tell guys. Gary, Uncle Gary, that we're going to contribute despite his involvement. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Make sure you tell him that. I will. Have a good one. Thank Thanks. you, Gary.